Welcome to Whitetail Season here at AmericanHunter.org. If you've been watching the past couple of weeks, you realize that I'm sitting here on my home farm in Iowa without a buck tag in my pocket. Now I've got some does, some antlerless tags uh, that I can take out and do a little bit of hunting here. I've been catching up on work in the office, uh, so I haven't had a chance to get back out again. But that doesn't mean that there hasn't been some hunting activity on our farm. So I'm going to talk about that in today's episode, talk a little bit about what the deer are doing during this time frame and uh, how we can take advantage of that and how, in fact, uh, some friends of mine actually did take advantage of that. Anytime you're hunting bucks during the rut, there's two patterns that you can key on. One is you find the does because the bucks are going to be hunting the does. And you're hoping that one of the does is in estrus or close to coming into estrus and that's going to attract a lot of uh, attention from the bucks. Or you hunt in a spot between two areas where the does are concentrated. And in that case, you're looking for funnels where any bucks cruising from one concentration area of does to another would narrow down, giving you a high odds chance for a bow shot. So what we're going to talk about in today's episode is the second case, and how to find these hot funnels or these areas where the cruising bucks go through during the rut. I start my search for the perfect funnel by looking at an aerial photo. As you can see in front of me, I've got a big one here of the farm. And if you look at this, you can see a big area of, of cover narrowing down to one little narrow creek bottom, then it spreads back out again into another big area of cover. And this is the classic rut hunting bottleneck. There's got to be does spread out throughout these areas. And you've got that much habitat, there's going to be does bedding in them, living in them, browsing in them. And the bucks know this. So during the rut, they cruise. You know, we know we've heard about cruising bucks. You know, how do we figure out where these bucks cruise? Well, they're going to go between these two areas of concentrated doe activity. You have a big block of habitat with does, a big block of habitat with does, and a little narrow band of cover between them. And that just so happens to be the spot where a friend of mine, Mike Sawyer, and cameraman Sam Soholt, which is also one of the producers here at Midwest Whitetail, they're in a tree stand right on the edge of this funnel on the morning of November 13th. It's the morning of November 13th. We're on a little sliver of timber that runs along this arm of the creek. And it separates a big pasture, big open area up on the top, and this big grass bottom. And that beans off to the west. And these deer just travel through this area, either coming or going. We had good activity all morning until probably 11 o'clock yesterday. Unfortunately, it's pretty warm. Uh, never got below 50 last night. It's low 50s right now. The wind's kicking about 15 to 20. Um, but you know what? We only need one hot dough to run through here and bring some friends with her. So. We'll get settled in here and uh, bring you an update here in just a little bit. Sam Buck in the creek right here, right behind you. He's coming right up the creek. Well, things can change in a hurry. Uh, we just got done talking about how warm it was and just didn't have a good feel to it. And that buck comes right down the creek and, and gives me a gives me a, a nice clean shot. So, like I said before, things can things can turn on a dime. So. 
Hey, Sam, right here, right here, another box. It's about 80 yards, right here. Here, no, give me the camera. Give me it. Hey, Sam. get much better than that. I mean, seriously, I mean, so I just saw a shot of Buck, what, five minutes ago? And he ran off in the woods and we were sitting here and he called Bill and told him he shot one and then all of a sudden we were getting ready to shoot cutaways and uh, all of a sudden Mike goes, there's another buck coming. And swung the camera over to him and he walked right down the creek. Gave me a broadshed shot <laughs> 15 yards. We doubled up this morning. It's November 13th. You couldn't ask for a better day. <laughs> Here he is. I mean, you couldn't ask for a crazier morning. I don't think either Mike and I were all that optimistic <clears throat> coming in here when it was, you know, 56 degrees, you know, when I was driving over to pick him up this morning. But and he, like he said, he even got just, just got done saying this morning really doesn't have a very good feel to it. And it wasn't five minutes later and we had bucks moving through and he shot his and tried to do an update and this one came in right behind us. So. It's definitely a good double up morning. Well, there's not much suspense with uh, Sam. We watched him fall right by the tree, but I've got the official Winky tracking crew here with me now, so we're ready to go see if we can recover mine. Let's go get him. Here's where he ended up. Nonetheless, I'm really happy with him. It's one we had seen four or five times from the stand, and uh, it sure made an exciting hunt with uh, shooting this one, and then literally five minutes later, uh, we're filming an interview, and, and another buck comes in, and, and Sam gets a crack at him and knocks him down too, so pretty pretty great uh, way to end the, the bow season for me. Um, we'll get back at it in the late season, obviously. But. I always like to learn something on every hunt, whether it's successful or unsuccessful. I'm looking at Mike and uh, Sam's hunt from the 13th of November, and the thing that really jumps out at me is what we've already talked about, the way that this funnel really came into effect and brought these two bucks past this tree stand. And if you go back and look at the hunt again, you'll see that one buck was coming from one direction and one buck was coming from the, from the other. So there wasn't like there was a hot doe that had gone through and they were both on her tail. They were literally cruising on a, on a morning during the rut, looking for any signs of a doe that was in estrus. They were passing through there, going from one area of habitat to another. Now it's a narrowing down, of course, but again, this whole band of habitat might be 70 yards wide, and that's too much to cover from one tree stand if you're hunting with a bow. So this one actually brought into effect the terrain as well as the cover. The narrow band to cover, we had this steep bluff that came in above the tree stand, which kind of pushed the deer around it. They don't like to go up and straight down these areas that are really steep and really thick. So they'll generally follow the contour lines around. We're going to bring you a pan from that tree stand. You can see there's a steep block in behind the tree stand. And the deer all funnel around that steep part and follow the contours around. So if you're looking for something like this in the area where you hunt, focus on the aerial photo first. You look at it, you can see you know, the habitat. You can see where these bottlenecks are, where these hourglass type funnels are between two areas of large blocks of habitat. So you can use this, um, and I do. I mean, I use these types of lessons every year trying to figure out where's the best spot for my tree stand. So we're gonna be back again another week. And uh, I, like I said, I'm hoping that I can get out and, and uh, fill some doe tags, but we're gonna continue on the same type of a theme. You know, it's, it's a waiting game right now until the bow season is over. The gun seasons are gonna come in here pretty soon at the very beginning of December. And our kids will be out hunting during the gun seasons. I'm gonna get the cameras back out here pretty soon try to establish patterns on some of these bucks that are still left. We still have three more bucks off the American Hunter hit list that we haven't accounted for. 
So we're going to try to find these deer, get on them, and, and set those up for the kids to hunt for the December seasons. So continue to come back and check in. We're far from done for the year. I've got another tag for late season as well, so there's going to be a lot more action right here at Whitetail Season at AmericanHunter.org.